Lord Holderness served with the 2nd Battalion, King's Royal Rifles. Aged just 22, he lost both his legs in action during the North African campaign. Here in his interview, recorded in 2000, he talks about his injury and how he coped with the challenge of life as a double amputee. Well, the story is that uh, it happened to be with a, a brother officer who got a lot of his vehicles stuck in a, a very soft piece of ground about five miles from where the regiment was uh, situated. And I remained with him and we did a bit of pulling out the tow ropes and so on. We eventually got him out and I therefore joined my battalion about noon on the 30th of December and I found that uh, one of the vehicles in my platoon had been hit and damaged and uh, I thought that the best thing was to try and divide the things and I was busy doing this and frequently from the air it must have appeared that there were uh, in a well dispersed battalion there were two vehicles a bit too close to each other which was obviously a tempting target and this was the target that they then dived at in the Stuka bombers and I thought that <laughs> I thought that the safest place to um, spend my, my next 10 or 20 minutes was in a bomb hole made by the Stukas in the morning. Uh, I'd been brought up on that uh, rather false eddy, it doesn't come quite. But this one did. I remember looking up and seeing them coming down, the bomb, and thinking that, okay, well, I was all right because I was in a place that it hit in the morning. It wouldn't hit it again. And unfortunately, they did. But the forceful part, uh, w without which I would not be talking to you, was that the bomb that they dropped on the lower part of my leg uh, didn't go off. And I remember being picked up by the doctor very quickly and taken off in an ambulance. And the, the ambulance getting lost in the desert and uh, lying in the back of the ambulance, carrying a sort of uh, rather worried consultation going on between the driver and his co-driver as to where this uh, advanced dressing station was and so the night passed, and I think uh, they amputated my legs on the evening of the 31st. I remember waking up. <laughs> they gave me morphia, and I thought morphia was marvellous stuff. Given any encouragement, I should easily become an addict. But anyhow, uh, I did wake up from the morphia in the middle of the first night after I'd been wounded. And I remember, <laughs> I remember hearing one of, the, one of these two poor men who got lost saying to the other, Do you think he'll live through the night? I listened rather carefully because I was quite interested <laughs> in the answer. And the other one said, yes, I think so, Pablo. And then I remember sort of coming to enough, so I wasn't unconscious. And I remember saying, do you think I'm going to be able to walk again? Oh, yes. A very confident reply, so that cheered me up a bit. But first of all, I was in a hospital, uh, Helmia, and not very far from Heliopolis in Cairo. It was filled with young officers who'd had much the same experience as me. Some had lost legs, some had still had them. That was immensely reassuring. There were a lot of friends who came to visit me, a lot of friends who took me out to lunch in Cairo in my wheelchair. And my great mentor, a Presbyterian minister, uh, to whom I owe a very, very great deal. And, and I put a lot of desire to recover and make a decent job of it down to him. I can honestly tell you that I don't think I thought very much about the inconvenience and the fact of not being able to do all the things I used to do. I think I looked at it, it sounds very heroic, but it wasn't really very, as more of a sort of challenge to see what I could achieve. My challenge, I suppose, was what could I do? First of all, how active I could be in a wheelchair, wheeling myself around, and then the prospect of getting a pair of artificial legs and learning to walk. All that, strangely, was rather exciting. The only thing, I, looking back, that I remember uh, thinking I was going to miss very much was the long tramp, which I used to enjoy so very much, uh, around the worlds in Yorkshire or wherever it might be. And I remember being visited one day by a kind, bro kind brother-in-law who happened to be very lazy and certainly didn't like uh, any walking. And I said to him, I'm afraid this is one of my regrets that I shan't be able to go for the kind of long walks that I used to enjoy so much. To which he said, my dear, you don't realize how lucky you are. <laughs> uh, 
And this made me laugh, and I've always, I've always remembered that. And whenever I, I do regret not being able to go for a long walk, I think how lucky I am. <laughs> Please help to rescue and preserve more memories of the Second World War. Visit www.war-experience.org.